Seventh Company. Twelfth Company. Ninth Belgian Infantry. Excuse me, sir. We have been sent some Belgians. They will be attached to the 14th Company. Go and see what they look like. It is good to kill with this. Like carving butter. Quiet down! Fucking line, corporal. Where is your captain? Dead, sir. Lieutenants? Dead, sir. Sergeants? Well, who's in charge here? I am, sir. March with the others. We'll sort this out. All their officers? They were hit very hard in Flanders, sir. 70 survivors from a company of 264. Damn the senior command. I didn't want a Belgian company in the first place. Certainly not one without officers. My company can spare a lieutenant. No company can. I'm not wasting a French lieutenant on a bunch of Belgians. Unless I make a new one. Bring me Sergeant Moreau. <laughs> the Major wishes to discuss something of importance with you. I suggest you make yourself a little more presentable. Think it's for stealing the Captain's cheese? No. Stealing the Major's wine? No. Trying to steal the Colonel's daughter. Maybe. You have made citations for courage seem commonplace. Thank you, sir. Your command will be a Belgian company. Sir? And don't worry. It will only be for three weeks until their new officers arrive. Uh, I don't understand, sir. They got here from Flanders this morning. Not much to look at, but they are hell on the enemy. That, at any rate, is their reputation. Well, where are their officers? Dead. All of them? How? I don't know. What are you suspicious about? I've been at the front a long time, sir. I've seen a lot. I've never seen all the officers in a company die in one battle. Go make acquaintance with your men, Lieutenant Moreau. Yes, sir. Well, good news and bad news. So what's the good news? No, I'm not in trouble. They made me a lieutenant. <laughs> That's very good news, Lieutenant Moreau. <laughs> and the bad news? You'll see in a minute. Emil! Give it back! Give it to him. That's an order. I don't give a damn about your orders. Corporal! Stand at attention! charge here. I am, sir. Come with me. I'm Lieutenant Morrow. What's your name, Corporal? Defense, sir. Belgian officers will not be arriving for three weeks. Until then, I'm your new commanding officer. What? With all due respect, Lieutenant... Don't argue with me. It's done. Neither of us can change it. So let me get to the point. It's no secret the Belgians don't like the French. Is there going to be a problem? 
No, sir. What was going on back there with the book? The men are a little restless, sir. That kind of restlessness I don't need. Who is the man with the scar? Is he a troublemaker? There was some trouble in Flanders, yes, sir. What kind of trouble? Well, we were attacking. The machine gun fire was very bad. Our captain, Captain Coat, was behind me. After the enemy retreated, I went to him. He was dead. He was bayoneted in the back. The man with the scar, Jacques, was standing over him. Your captain could have been killed by the enemy, Corporal. Do you trust this man, this Jacques? No, sir, I don't. Inform the men of my command. You are my second officer. Giscard is my first. Be in the Major's bunker at 7 for a briefing. Dismissed. They've placed us under French command. No, no, no. They can do this, you are Belgians. What about our new officers? But they promised. They'll be here in three weeks. Until then, we'll be led by Lieutenant Moreau. You little bastard. You sold us out, didn't you? I had nothing to do with it. The bike corporal, he sold us out! Give it a rest. I have my time with you. Gentlemen, High Command has given us our objective. A frontal assault along these three kilometers here. The plan is to outflank the enemy with one brigade here and another here. The attack will be led by the newly formed Belgian company led by Lieutenant Moreau. The key is the Chateau La Maisonnette here. The chateau sits on high ground. German gunners on this ridge have free access over the whole field of operations. The chateau must be taken. I began my career 21 years ago as an enlisted man. I have been at the bottom. I have been at the top, and I shall be in both places again. Tomorrow on that hill, you're going to face adversity. I've never known a soldier who hasn't. There are two things that separate the first-rate soldier and the second-rate soldier. The first-rate soldier gets up when he's knocked down. And the first-rate soldier knows that anything can be accomplished. Anything can be accomplished if you work together. You will get to the top of that hill if you work together. You will take the chateau if you work together. Dismissed, gentlemen. Our countries have had differences in the past. I recognize that. But now we fight together. You can follow me, or you can follow each other. The first means an orderly attack and a chance of success. Second means chaos and death. You choose. Take your positions. Stray bullets, Corporal.
Back off. My, my Russian sack. Just do it! They went the wrong way. I tried to throw them some grenades. Those fools, they're right under those machine guns. More grenades! We can use them all! I kept one. We've got to get those grenades to them. I don't see how. Because you're not looking. That stone wall. Come on. Far away, we'll never make it. Don't tell me what we can't do, tell me what we can. Give me your grenade. If you don't have cover, you make it. Now follow me. Are we going to attack the chateau? Not until we get reinforcement. Third battle sector secured. Repeat, third sector is secured. Send reinforcements immediately. No one else made it. Second and 14th companies are devastated. How bad are we? 30 dead, 15 wounded. I know what you did out there, Corporal. I know. What are you talking about? Do you have a sore arm, Corporal? Is that why you could not reach me? Too far. I threw as hard as I could. Then you straw like a girl. You're out of your league, Corporal. Yeah. 
out of your mind. Take your hand off me or I'll kill you. Yes? You could kill a man up close, like this. Maybe you could show me. You've had enough practice. What is this? I don't know about the Belgian army, but the French army does not allow fighting amongst itself. One more breach of this rule. I'll have you both shot. Get back to your post, Solomon. It's quiet. Yes, quiet. Now we begin again. I'll see you afterwards, Bernard. Yes, Alain. Attacking! Very well! What in the hell's name is that?
Sergeant, Corporal. We are relieved for two days. Tell the men. Get your kids together. We've been given a two-day leave. First I get clean, then I get drunk. Call me when the shooting starts. <laughs> Stupid British. Look at them. What's wrong with tennis? I play tennis. I wish you challenged them. That's a great idea. You know, I'm really looking forward to this one. Okay, what's it going to be, up or down? Sergeant, could you just check the height? That looks about the right height. Good luck, my Belgian friends. Good luck. What will it be, then? Losers buy the winners a round of beer. Oh, I love the British. You fight like girls. And you bet like them, too. <laughs> I should kick your greasy Belgian ass for saying that. But, seeing we're allies, how about the losers buy the beers all night? Sweet wine over there. No, thanks. The things sweet to taste prove indigestion sour. Well spoken. Oh, it's not original. And well stolen. Shakespeare. Yes, in fact, it is. Richard II, Act One. Scene Three. A Belgian corporal who speaks good English with a mastery of Shakespeare. I don't believe it. Good Lord. Whatever next? The Germans playing cricket. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. So. Young fan of literature. Do you know anything about verse? Well, I've read a little. Good, good. I, uh, I want your opinion on something. <coughs> you wouldn't read that, would you? Poems by a Siegfried Sassoon, a German? Yeah. No, he's British. Read the poem that's marked, Corporal. Read it aloud. Dreamers by Siegfried Sassoon. Soldiers are citizens of death's gray land, drawing no dividends from time's tomorrows. In the great hour of destiny they stand, each with his feuds and jealousies and sorrows. Soldiers are sworn to action they must win, some flaming fatal climax with their lives. Soldiers are dreamers when the guns begin. They think of firelit homes, clean beds and wives. I see them in foul dugouts gnawed by rats, and in the ruined trenches lashed with rain, dreaming of things they did with balls and bats, and mocked by hopeless longing to regain 
bank holidays and picture shows and spats and going to the office and the train. If you ask me, that's the silliest rubbish I've ever heard. What do you think, Corporal? I think it's quite good. I really do. Congratulations. You passed the test, Corporal. Lieutenant Robert Graves. And Lieutenant Siegfried Sassoon. Corporal Henry Defonce, you wrote this? Well, who did you think wrote it? An American? Let's get a drink. I'm parched. We'll have lost every good man in England by the time this bloody thing's over. Damn the British government. Don't start. When you get going, it's close to treason. What about the British government? The day after England declared war on Germany, I enlisted. Like all good men, I was patriotic. I thought we were waging war for peace for freedom. But there are men in England, Corporal de France, who have motivations that are entirely different. What? Money. The industrialists, the makers of arms, have every desire to keep this blasted thing going. Well, that's a bit strong. Is it? Don't you realize that their profits have tripled since this conflict began? I wish you wouldn't say things like that, Siegfried. It confuses me. Maybe feeble-minded of me, but I have to have a, a reason to keep going. Excuse me, Corporal. It was a pleasure to meet you. What happened? Robert had a nervous breakdown about a month ago. Forgive me. If you're so cynical about the war, why do you go on fighting? Because it's my duty. So did you, a month ago. Come, copper. Our objective remains the same. The taking of Chateau Le Maisonette. The intelligence confirms that the enemy has strengthened his fortifications here and here with additional men. Over a thousand this time. Your valor is beyond question. You must look into yourself to be the best soldier you can be. The second-rate soldier lives with mediocrity and dies with regret. But the first-rate soldier, he lives with honor. And when death comes, he dies with honor. Good luck to you, gentlemen. Take your positions! Fix! Bayonet! I'll prove your soul, Corporal. Why don't you just shut up and follow the orders?
stuck with us. Thanks. Go to hell! I don't want your thanks! You better watch yourself. Lieutenant Moreau suspects you killed Captain Cove in Flanders. Really? Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> and what do you think, huh? <laughs> Come on! Keep going! To the Chateau, man! Viva la <laughs> the other end of the tunnel and trap us in here.
Sergeant, take those men prisoners. These are citizens of death's gray land, drawing no dividend from time's tomorrows. The great hour of destiny they stand, each with his feuds and jealousies and sorrows. I don't like this. How long ago did the messenger leave Copper? 25 minutes, sir. Damn it. I can't hold this position with 30 men. No one can. Sorry about Sergeant Giscard, Lieutenant. He did his duty. The weather is fine today. It reminds me of home. Sir, no matter what happens, I... It reminds me of my wife. <laughs> That doesn't mean we are friends.
Remy! Remy! Henri! Emile, have you seen Remy or any of the others? No, we are the only ones left. What are those? Officers' uniforms. There's a captain for me and a lieutenant for you. They're French. Where did you get them? Don't ask. When the officers who own these wake up, they'll have you court-martialed. They won't wake up, Henri. They are dead. The uh, guards were throwing them out. Now, put it on. I hear commissioned officers are treated much better where we are going. Where are we going? Out! We will know. Soon enough. Out! Lieutenant Pierre Blanc from Paris. Captain Francois Tusson from Lyon. At last, I outrank you. Maybe I will have you shine my boots, yes? Yeah? No count on it. New recruit. Maybe this will be the war which does not end. Maybe it will just go on forever. Those trees. What about the guards? They'll be looking for us. They're probably all dead. Come on, we're a hundred yards from those woods. I'm red! And no! Das wär's hier, Schweine! Raus! Double barbed wire, guard towers. At least it's not Dusterstadt. What's that? You don't know about Dusterstadt? It's a medieval castle on the Danube. More of a dungeon, really. It's where they send all the bad apples. Any ideas? Not yet, but it's only our first day. Playing catch. My ball. Catch. With whom? With me. I'm sorry. I swear. I'll get you, Benny.
Thank you. I'm Captain Jean Bonnet. Lieutenant Pierre Blanc. Captain Francois Toussaint. So, how do you like our vacation resort? I'm disappointed. They advertised a beach with bathing beauties. Well, you know Germans always camping on the extras. What were you doing? Come with me. The new men, Colonel. Captain Toussaint and Lieutenant Blanc. Welcome, gentlemen. Did you get a new measurement? I estimate another 15 feet to the first wire. Now we have two problems. First, we're out of tunnel supports. We've used all the wood available, even bed slats. Any more and the guards will be onto us. And second, we've run out of places to store dirt from the tunnel. So, it's hopeless to continue. Exactly. There is nothing more that we can do. Men, please. Do you have a solution, Captain Bennett? We dig the remaining 20 feet in one night. And we dump the dirt right here, on the floor. But what about the tunnel supports? We won't need them. The tunnel will hold together for a few hours. We'll dig in shifts. We'll dig so fast, we'll blast out before the tunnel collapses. Who do you have in mind to do this? Blasting. Me, and anyone else who's up to it. I'll do it. Are you crazy? It'll work. This is insanity. That's what they say about every great idea at first. Ten feet to go. What? Shh. We've gone farther than that. No, this is accurate. I'll take over. <laughs> There's got to be another way. Our only chance is through this dirt. Four feet to go. We've reached the end. Tell them to pop up. Yes, sir. Ready? Here goes. Periscope. tell you this, but we're five feet short. I don't understand. We're between the fences. My calculations were accurate. Not accurate enough. That's five feet. We should be past the second wall. It's time, gentlemen. Not you two. You go after these other men. We dug the tunnel. You dug the last 20 feet. These men dug the first 100 feet. He's right. I don't care. Without the last 20 feet, there'd be no tunnel. Back up, Lieutenant. Guards! Stop! Stop!
Good evening, Captain Heinz. You look uncomfortable, Benny. Hey. Why are you uncomfortable? Hmm? It must be that smell, Captain Heinz. The smell of Germany, the armpits of Europe. <laughs> <laughs> I will have you in isolation for the rest of your life. Mensch. Lieutenant Devereaux, 30 days in isolation. Captain Bourdonnais, your second attempt, 60 days. You know what they say, Commandant? Practice makes perfect. 90 days. See you in three months. Lieutenant Blanc, a man who does not waste time. You arrive here at 4 p.m. 12 hours later, you are climbing out of a tunnel. Remarkable. I have taken measures to limit your career as an escape artist. I don't expect to dig out of isolation, Commandant. Who said anything about isolation? I have arranged for your transfer to the maximum security prison at Dusterstadt. What? Eventually, Lieutenant, it becomes clear when a prisoner is incorrigible. Your records show four escape attempts at other prisons and now five. That makes you an incorrigible, Lieutenant Blanc. Wait, but th there's been a mistake. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not him. You're not who, Lieutenant? I'm not Lieutenant Blanc. My name's Henry Defonce. I'm a corporal in the Belgian army. <laughs> and I'm Kaiser Wilhelm. Don't insult my intelligence. Get him out of here. I hope you like your new home, Lieutenant.
Let me be brief. You cannot tunnel the castle is built upon granite. If you try to disguise yourself as a German soldier, you'll be shot as a spy. If you attempt to bribe my men, you will be shot as a corrupting influence on German morale. I don't want any trouble from you. East Castle. And so with the advancements in new technology, the mere packages. Gentlemen, control yourselves. We'll open the mail after the lecture. Introduce yourself, Lieutenant. Hello. I'm Lieutenant Blanc. Have a seat, Lieutenant Blanc. I'm lecturing on medieval military tactics. Why medieval tactics? I beg your pardon? Well, if French and English generals would have studied the American Civil War, we'd have beaten the Germans by now. A bold statement, Lieutenant. Explain further, if you please. Well, that was the first war that armies used modern technology to full advantage. The cavalry charge had become obsolete. Even Ulysses S. Grant realized that the future of war lay not in the open field, but in the... In trenches, yes. Well, you know a good deal about this subject, Lieutenant. But if you are induced to start, you must know a good deal about something else. Escaping from German prisons. Do you have plans? We may. You speak with an accent, Lieutenant. I do? Yes. I can't make it out. There was a rumor circulating that the commandant was releasing spies into the prison. Germans impersonating French and English officers. I wonder what we'd do if we exposed one of them. We would kill him. So tell me, Lieutenant, where are you from in France? Paris? So am I. Name the three roads leading from Paris to Versailles. The Rue de Napoleon. The traitor. Spy! Oh, wait. He's not German. Who won the World Series in 1912? What? Just answer the question. The Boston Red Sox. He's not German. He's American. Is your rank also fake, Lieutenant? Okay, I enlisted in the Belgian Army. They were the only ones that would take me without asking questions about my age. I'm a corporal. Ah, a corporal. And where did you get the jacket? Did you know you could be shot for stealing it? The previous owner wasn't going to need it. I understand. Come on, let's open our mail. Gentlemen, gentlemen. So, here you are, Jean-Paul. Oh, nice. André, Etienne. There you are, Yuri, all the way from St. Petersburg. That, remember, save your string. What are you doing with all this string? A Russian superstition. Put the string from a gift in your pocket and you will get many more. Da. Hello? Lambert, Royal Flying Corps. I'm in charge of the infirmary. You must be the new man, yes? I came in yesterday. Nice to meet you. Right, right. Listen, just so that you know, I'm not actually a doctor. I, uh, I studied medicine for a couple of years, but then I switched over to the law. Yes? Uh, but I can give you some advice, though. Don't eat the meat. It's rotten, and you don't need it anyway. Also, boil all your drinking water. That way you'll save yourself a lot of uh, stomach problems, if you know what I mean. And if there are any other problems that you have, you can just have a word with my two orderlies over there, Simon and Ian. Okay? 
Thanks. Jolly good. Carry on. Ah, Cabinet de Gaulle. You must let me have a look at that leg of yours. If you neglect it, it's going to drop off. Hmm? I fooled a lot of people with my French. No doubt you have. It is excellent. How did you know I was American? My father is a professor of philosophy. During my youth, I met many American scholars. All spoke French fluently, but none perfectly. I recognize your game at once. Why are you induced just that? I refuse to submit to captivity. I'll get out of here. It's only a matter of time. How? Does it matter? When a man accepts bondage to the Germans, he accepts death. Do you hate the Germans? They are the natural enemy of France. We fought them in 1870, we fight them now, and this I can guarantee you, Coco, before this century is over, we will fight them again. The art of war is changing. It is up to us to change with it. In 1415, a small band of English soldiers wiped out the flower of French knighthood in one afternoon. How? The English longbow. It could pierce the knight's armor. They were sitting ducks. Mark my words, Corporal. The next great war will not be won with superior men. It will be won with superior machines, tanks, and airplanes. Americans are cowboys. You are American, so you must be cowboy, no? Well, not really. I can ride a horse, but I... Oh, really? And the lasso? Can you make the lasso and rope the bronco buster? Well, I suppose if I had to... A cowboy! Is there some point to this? Come here. Please. I want you to make the lasso and rope something. Something really important. Like what? Like that? <laughs> You're joking. You're not joking. You're out of your minds. You want me to make a lasso and rope that spike? Where am I gonna get a rope that long? Did you... The string from all those packages. Can you do it? This makes things different. So tell me, Corporal, if you weren't fighting this war, what dream will you be following? I guess I'd be at home, going to high school. Where did you get captured? At the Somme. We charged a hill and took it. The counterattack was deadly. Almost everyone died. And you? Verdun. I was not unconscious. Germans found me in the mud. That's where I got this. And that is Dinan. Many leisurely. De Gaulle's body is now the map of France. So tell me, Corporal, about your escape plans. Don't lie to me. I know you've been working on something. You're the devious type. Maybe I have. What is it? I can save you a lot of time and effort. Something with the Russians? Possibly. 
Those crazy Russians, they have got a new plan every day. Last week, they wanted me to help them build an airplane. <laughs> I wouldn't waste your time with them, Corporal. Are you ready? Well, I wanted to talk to you about something. A new idea for our escape? Well, not exactly. I'm not going. Why? Oh, you have talked to the British and the French. We know what they say about us. That we're crazy Russians, eh? That we'll get you killed. Well, oh, come here. Come. Come. Two years. It took us two years to make this. Look, there's the outside parapet. You can do it. Then down the outside wall, then freedom. All right. Ah. All right, I'll do it. I'll go first. Oh, why you? I made the rope. You made the half of it. Stop arguing. Same time. That's not a good idea. This rope won't hold you both. I made this with my own hands. It's strong enough. Each new prisoner at Dusterstadt is told of the difficulty, the impossibility of escape. It is curious how often I am disappointed by the lack of communication.
I hope these visual aids will make things more clear. Dusserstadt was chosen to hold you not because of its aesthetics, not because of its geographic location, but because it cannot be escaped from. I hope in future we can avoid more painful lessons. in a coffin. Well, it's just a small graveyard on the very edge of the town. Before the war, they used to, they used to use it to bury the indigent and the insane. And that's the only place they go? Well, yes, as far as I know, yes. Who does the burying? Mm, what do you mean? The actual digging. Yeah. Well, my two orderlies, Simon and Ian. Can they be trusted? Yes, of course they can. Can they get away with it? I think so. There won't be much margin for error. Yes, yes, I understand. But the truth is, the orderlies never bury the bodies six feet deep. It's much too much hard work. They're lucky if they bury them half that depth. And the guards don't know this? No, 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 no. They're nowhere near the graveyard. They're far too superstitious. They wait with the trucks. Down? Of course, sir. See, sir, like thumbtacks. One could push from inside and they'll come undone. Okay. Say we bury some stiffs.
Nine. Down. What? Get in the boat. He's taking you back. But we've got to dig the graves. No more digging, hmm? Go, get in the boat. What do you mean, no more digging? If we are not going to bury them. If you're not going to bury them, what are you going to do with them? Burn them! Off! Raised a Catholic, I should say something. Get it over with. Uh, dear God, let this man go to hell. I thought you'd never hear me. Come on. Don't run, okay? <laughs> 